first time in the home of the Detroit Zero or Brother Bill, you're going to see your daddy. And most likely your mom is going to beat you there. But you know it's strange that we sing a song today, Mel the Waters on the way to Charleston. We got to talking about our families. You know, I looked at her, and I know, you know, most people talk about their mother-in-laws, but I, I had a wonderful mother-in-law. And, I, you know, I don't mean to brag, but I was her pig. <laughs> and I told her, Lord, I said, you know, I really want to kind of see her first when I get there. I got a mom and dad there, but I want to see her first. It's good when a son-in-law and a mother-in-law can get along. Amen. Because, you know, most times uh, when, when a man marries a woman, uh, mother's daughter, they just ain't good enough. And if a daughter marries somebody, well, the father said, that man ain't good enough to be. But you know what? When you've got the Spirit of God, amen, yeah. leading you in your marriage. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And, and sometimes you turn away from that thing, and that's when you have trouble in the flesh. But you know what? I just praise God. Amen. One of these days, like I said, there's coming a homecoming. Praise the Lord. And we're going to be happy. There are going to be tears of joy. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to praise Him. Amen. We're not going to be up there and hearts and bass guitars. And, no, it'll be joy, Bill. That's the only thing I can explain. It. Praise the Lord. This is the best way I can explain. Have you ever been in the presence of God and you don't want to come out of it? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. He is worthy, is he not? You know, that's one question. When you think about it, will it be worthy? Amen. Be worth the way. Shh. Man, if we could only see, Pastor, if we could only really see it. I tell you, the more you die to self, the more you long for it. The more you realize, the more you see the world going on, the chaos is not for you. You don't operate the way it operates. You don't function the way it functions. You don't love the same thing it loves. You long to be with those that love God and those, and God to love you back and have that fellowship. Amen? Amen. I love that song. That's an awesome song. Praise God. Anybody got any testimonies tonight before we turn the pastor loose? Anybody? All right. There's one.
God. Amen. Amen. Don't you think of that little encouragement that gets you up over the hump sometimes? Amen. Anybody else tonight? Let's hear, buddy. Some of us were just 
we're just so focused on things that we got to do, we miss opportunities like that. So praise God that He was there. Amen? Yeah, that's right. Amen. Anybody else? Marty, you got something you want to say? Yeah, Mike, up here last Saturday, uh, I felt so bad physically that I actually started to call somebody to clean church. That's how bad I felt. I, I was so weak, I couldn't hold my head up. I come in here and I said, well, you can't just talk, talk negative. You know you feel bad. But I started singing this. I can't even remember all the songs, but I started singing different songs. And that Mike, in 10, 15 minutes, I was 80% feeling better. And I just thank God because He always gives me the strength to do what I have to do. And I love it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Speaking as Brother Kevin was singing that song tonight, I say what the Apostle Paul wrote. He said, I have not seen, no ear have heard, neither have it entered the heart of man what God hath in store for those that love him. Ain't that powerful? That song he sang, let it make you hope sing. Ah, uh, y'all ain't in it, y'all no. Let me talk to you about this. That song Kevin sang earlier, make you hope sing. Oh, y'all can't lie, but we're the people in the world. He can make you homesick, man. Those words of that song that he sang absolutely will make you homesick. I don't know about you, but I can't wait till the moment I get there because once I get there, I know I'm there for good. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And I know that I'm not, I know that I'm there forever. I'm not going to have to worry about anything else ever, ever again. Amen. Ain't that good? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We're going to have a brand new body. Glorified God. Like in fashion to His body. Hallelujah. I'm going to look good too. Oh, glory to God. He took about five steps and all them other steps. Hallelujah. Jet black hair once again. Oh, how you ain't going to know it when you see it. Praise God. Amen. It's going to be good, though. I said it's going to be good. I said, it's going to be good. Amen. You don't want to miss it. I said, you don't want to miss it. Amen. I said, you don't want to miss it. Amen. You don't want to fool around and miss it. Amen. Hallelujah. Get ready, because we're going. Amen. Well, I've got three little grunts out there. I'll tell you, I'll kill for mine. I'll wait. Amen. Praise God. Well, Okay, I'll dismiss some of you. Maybe it'll get better as we go along. We'll go down and start going in. Amen. Praise God. All the youth, all the kids going down to our children's church. I'll try to go down tonight. Well, God bless you. Be careful. Amen. I don't have nobody in here. Nobody stuck in the road. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord is good. Greatly to be praised. Amen. Praise God. All right. Amen. My body thought. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay, you have your Bible so with me tonight to uh, Revelation chapter 1. What do you think about that? Hallelujah. Uh, Revelation chapter 1. Proverbs 18. Romans 10. We'll just go from Genesis to Revelation. Just start in Genesis and we'll go through it a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Revelation chapter 1. Proverbs 18. Romans 10. I'll be a couple other places, but this all will be on the screen, but you can really see what the word is saying. Alright. Okay. That's your Bible's just where you need to look at. Amen. You can't underline nothing on that screen, but you can underline in your Bible. You can jot a little thing down in your Bible. You can do this and you can do that in your Bible, but you can't do it on that screen. Amen. Anybody love the Lord tonight? Amen. Anybody think will be alive tonight? Yeah. Amen. Anybody glad that you are on your way to heaven? Amen. Well, I tell you, I am. Thank God. After that song, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Praise God. Kevin got me fired up. 
I'm going to get me some bluegrass gospel in this house yet. I got my bluegrass man up there. I just got to get a few more on board with him. We're going to turn heaven around. We're going to get her saved. It's all good. Amen. We'll find us a banjo picker up there. We'll be with you. Hang in here, Kevin. We'll get you out there. We'll get these people out there. Where's the banjo man at? Clarence plays banjo. Clarence, you play banjo. See, we're almost home free right now. Almost home free. We just got to get a couple more people that sing through their lungs. Well, Kevin plays banjo for them. Well, he can't do them all the time. He can't play lead. He can't play banjo sing a second. Well, he can't do all that one time. He ain't got two hands. One of them busted up now because he keeps hitting with a hammer. And being bad, he's supposed to hit the thing with a hammer. He's supposed to hit the nail with a hammer. Oh, be dumb, I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. Jesse, you're going to have to come take care of your man a little bit better than that. What? You shouldn't have left them alone. Well, he took out a freeway they bought and he took down the whole state of the house to go home on his freeway. Tore down the whole kitchen. Does he run in the family? Jay does run in the family? Oh, Jesus. Every time I come by your place, there's something going out the yard. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, man. It must run in Kathy. What have you done to your kid? <laughs> okay. All right. Revelation chapter 1. Are you there? We've done people don't care. We're going to. So we'll move on. But Jesse, you, you're going to have to help him a little bit. Okay. Keep the hammer. Take the hammer. With you. When you go, when you take, when y'all take off on vacation, you can pick a hammer back up. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Last Wednesday night we talked about uh, we talked about the confession of faith and how to release our faith. We talked about. Uh, we talked about uh, the importance of beginning with the Word and the result if we end with the Word. And we're going to pick up just a little bit more of that tonight. I'm not done with that. I might not be done that tonight. I may have a little bit more to go with it after tonight. So, excuse me how far I get tonight. Okay. All right. So, let's, let's go back to what we call, what I would call our foundational Scripture because this is good Scripture to start with. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 8. Jesus speaking. These are the words in red. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Notice that verse. Jesus is the beginning and the ending. He is the Almighty. Jesus said He was or He is to begin. So no matter what challenge in life, no matter what situation you find in life, you must begin with Jesus. Amen. Because He is the beginning. Amen. Right? Amen. We need to start with Him. Anything you start in life, you start with Jesus. Because He's the beginning. In John chapter 1, verse number 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the Word. He is the beginning. Amen. If you start with Jesus, you're going to have to start with the Word. Amen. Because Jesus is the Word. Amen. Right? So since Jesus is the beginning, anything you start in life, any circumstance in life, you begin with the Word. Don't do anything until you find out what the Word says about it. Don't do it until you find out what Jesus says about it because before you begin, you must begin with the Word. Amen. After you find what the Word says about it, then stay on the Word. Why? Because Jesus is the beginning and the ending. You begin with the Word, 
and you end with the Word. You stay on the Word. You don't come off the Word. You stay on the Word. No matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter what you feel, no matter what you smell, no matter what anybody else says, stay on the Word. Amen. Because Jesus is the beginning and the ending. Paul said it like this in Colossians 1 and 23. Paul says, continue in the faith, rooted and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard. Paul was saying, stay on the word. Continue on in faith. The only way the devil can defeat you is to pressure you into coming off the word. Let me say that one more time. The only way the devil can defeat you is to pressure you into coming off the word. The only way the enemy can defeat you is to pressure you on the coming of the Word. Jesus is the beginning. Jesus is the ending. Jesus is the Word. So you must begin with the Word and you must end with the Word. Everything the devil does to you and I, every challenge he brings to you and I is intended to make us come off the Word or to doubt the Word of God. So don't come off the Word. No matter what may happen, sell it with God in prayer and stay with the Word. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get a better amen? amen? Stay with the Word. Don't come off the Word. Jesus is the Word. He's the beginning and the ending. When you begin with the Word, you begin with Jesus because Jesus is the Word. You end with the Word. Because Jesus is the ending. Jesus said He is the first and the last. That means that the word, that means that the word of your doctor is not the last word. Well, that didn't go very good. Jesus is the beginning and the ending. So that means the word of your doctor is not the last word. So that means the word of your pastor is not the right, is not the last word. If Jesus is the beginning and the ending, then evidently His Word must be the ending. Yeah. So whatever, whatever has been told you by somebody else is not the ending. Jesus is the ending. The Word is the ending. Amen. Amen. Can we get an amen? amen. So it doesn't... So, so every time the enemy comes at you and I, he comes at you and I to do one thing, to get us to come off the Word. Because he knows if you don't come off the Word, the Word will eventually come to pass. Because Jesus is the beginning and Jesus is the end. The Word of Jesus is the last Word. His Word has to be your final authority. Amen. Once you have Jesus' Word on it, you can go ahead and celebrate the victory. Hallelujah. Listen, you don't have to wait on the outcome. If you have His Word on it, you, if you have Jesus' Word on the matter, you don't want to have to wait to see how it comes out. You go ahead and celebrate the victory because you know you have His Word on it. You're assured of a breakthrough in your life if you begin with the Word and stay with the Word. In with the Word. Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get a better amen? Amen. Why can I celebrate it? Because Jesus says in, he told, the Word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 that God watches over His Word to perform it, to bring it to completion. So if you've got His Word on the matter, then that's all you need on the matter. And you can settle yourself in Him and you can be assured that He will have the last Word if you have His Word on the matter. Amen. Because He's not only the beginning, but He's also the ending. He's the first and the last. So if I begin with the Word, I will end with the Word. And if I will end with the Word, He watches over His Word to bring it to completion. Amen. Thank you. Proverbs chapter 18, get over there. Let me give you the Scripture one more time. For the hundredth time in this hour. Proverbs 18. When you get over there, say, I'm there. I hope y'all are there. You know the scripture, but you need to look at it again anyway. Proverbs chapter 18. Let me lay the foundation, then we're going to dig a little bit deeper in this thing. Verse 20 and 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be fed. Notice verse 20. God says your mouth and your lips are going to fill you up. 
Look at it. Verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his what? With his what? Mouth. With his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So God says your mouth and your lips are going to fill you up. Notice verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So there must be fruit in our mouth. So there must be fruit in our mouth. Amen. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So there must be fruit in our mouth. In other words, the proper writer saying this: You're going to fill your spirit up with what you say. You're going to be full of what you are talking. With your words, you're going to be filled with life, and the fruit that it brings, you will eat. Or with your words, you're going to be filled with death and the fruit it brings, you shall eat. Amen. Right? That's what the writer's saying. So right now, you and I are a product of our words. We are full of what we are saying or what we have been saying. If you're full of low self-esteem, then that's what you've been saying about yourself. If you're full of discouragement, and if you're full of depression, then you've been thinking depressing thoughts and saying depressing words. I hold in my mouth whether I'm going to succeed or fail. I hold in my mouth whether I'm going to be a victor or the victor. Your words will produce fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we're, we, we, we're a product of what we've been saying over our lives. We, we, we will eat the fruit that our words bear. So if you want life, then you're going to have to walk. Speak life. James tells us that this little piece of meat between our gums... It's what's giving us in trouble. It's what's causing all of our problems. Listen to me, folks. I, I, I'm not serious about that. I believe, I believe there's all my heart. You and I don't nearly have the trouble with the devil as we do with our tongue. Amen. We are our worst enemy. Amen. Now, I know the devil gets credit for it, but the devil really, really gets credit he doesn't deserve. And God gets the blame he doesn't deserve. This little thing between our gums is what usually gets us in trouble. Because we're a byproduct of our words. It's either going to bring life or death. And there's fruit. There's fruit from that that we will eat. Now, I don't know about you, but I've eaten some fruit off my tree. I've been lying. I've had to eat crow before, and I don't like tasting crow. <laughs> I've had to eat some dirty fruit. Because I spoke some dirty words. And the devil didn't bring it my way, I brought it my way. Y'all, y'all don't want to go where we do. We possess in our mouth death and life. Fruit. Fruit that we will eat according to what we say. What does, what does the tongue want to do when, you, when, when, when it gets in a mess? One of the first things it wants to do is murmur and complain. And fuss about it, right? Yeah. Right? Amen. And, and, and what we get full of is what we will eat. See, Kevin just smashed his finger and began to talk in tongue. But it was... <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the I'm no glad I'm up here on the hills at that time. <laughs> Amen. Are you still with me? Amen. So if I want to be full of life, I've got to speak what? Life. life. If I want to be full of discouragement, then fill yourself up with self-pity words of death, and you'll get discouraged. Yeah. Jesus is the beginning, and Jesus is the ending. Jesus is the Word. So whatever circumstances or situation I'm in, I must begin with the Word, and I must end with the Word. I must stay on the Word. Amen. 
I must confess what Jesus has already said about me, about my health, about my emotional stability, about my finances, about my marriage, about my circumstances, about my life. What He's already said about me, I must confess what He's already said. Not what I feel, not what I see, not what I hear. I must confess what he's already said. For we get in trouble when we begin to, to confess what we feel. Oh, preach on, preach on. When we get in trouble when we want to confess what we hear. Oh, God, that was good right there. That was your trip to the house right there. Because what you heard might not be true. Preach on, preacher. We, if death and life is in the power of our tongues, and if we're going to, if we're going to walk in life, we will, we will eat the fruit that comes from life. Then we're going to have to begin to talk to life. Amen. Right. Amen. Right, preacher. Right. Let me show you how important your confession is and the result of your confession. Can I, can I dig it just a little bit more? For me, it's scripture. I mean, y'all know the scripture I'm going to go to, but this is a refresher course. It's what it is. It will stir up what you already know. Yeah. How many of you know we get complacent? Amen. We're creatures of habit. Yeah. We usually fall back somewhere along the way to what we what we used to do. Amen. Oh, I'm Let me show you how important, how important your confession is and the result of your confession. Romans chapter 10. Let's go there right quick. Let me show these familiar scriptures one more time. Then I think we can build on that. All right, Romans chapter number ten. Christianity begins with a confession. Y'all didn't know that. Christianity begins with a confession. Confession of the Lord of the Lordship of, the, of Jesus Christ will change your life. Christianity begins with a confession. Romans chapter ten, verse number eight. But what saith it? The word is my thee, even in my mouth and in my heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith has got to be where? In your heart and in your mouth. It can't just be in your heart and it can't be just in your mouth. It can't be just in your heart and it can't be just in your mouth. Oh, I don't go over well, that's good. The word of faith has to be, has to be in your in your heart and in your mouth. You've got to get it in your spirit Amen. and then release it as a two-edged sword out of your mouth. Amen. According to verse 8 of Romans chapter 10. Because the word of faith is now thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Amen. So the word of faith has to get in your spirit and then you release it as a two-edged sword out of your mouth. Got me? Yeah. Got me? Amen. Look at verse 9 and verse 10. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice verse 10, because verse 10 is a spiritual law. It is a spiritual law. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You could read verse 10 like this and still be scriptural. For with the heart man believeth unto healing, and with the mouth confession is made unto healing. Amen. In here, we you say, I lost your mouth. You could read that in there and never take that scripture out of context. Because the word of faith, which is not thee, is in thy mouth and in thy heart. You receive the word in your spirit. You release it as a two-edged sword out of your mouth. 
Look what the scripture says in verse number 10. Look at it. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice, salvation didn't come until you confessed it. Amen. Salvation did not come until you confessed it. You can believe on Jesus all day long and never confess Him as Lord and never be saved. You can come to this altar and you can kneel down and you can cry a truck load of tears and still not be saved. Amen. Because salvation does not come until you confess it. Just believing does not save you. A lot of people believe. Well, the Bible says the demons believe and tremble. So believing doesn't just save us, does it? Salvation did not come until you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. It didn't come. And, and, and once you did that, once you confessed Jesus as your Lord, then salvation came to your life. Anybody glad you confess Jesus as you will? Amen. Listen, and when, and when you confess that, when you said, Jesus, I confess you as my Savior, as my Lord, you know what happened? The Word began to work in your life. Amen. You began, your, your spirit began, it was reborn, and now the Word begins to work in your life. Right. Just believing did not make you saved. A lot of people believe in God, believe in Jesus, but they've never been changed. Because they never confess Jesus as Lord of their life. That's why when you when somebody comes for salvation, you 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 you, you got to take him down the Roman road. You you got to show him how to be saved scripturally. And I always make them. I say, you you repeat. I can't pray for you, but you pray after me. I'm going to pray with you. You repeat these words. And I and I make them repeat the words that that, that are in Romans chapter ten, verse nine and ten, so that they will know scripturally they've been born again. And if nobody don't get to them, all they may have is emotional experience on this altar. If somebody don't tell them how to be this to me, don't take for granted everybody knows how to be saved because they don't. A lot of Christian people don't know how to lead somebody to Jesus. Now that's sad, but there's people sitting in the church view that does not know how to lead somebody to the Lord's Scripture. I'm showing you now how you do it. Just because we believe doesn't necessarily mean we are saved because salvation began when we confess Jesus as Lord of our life. Can we get an amen from somebody? Amen. When you believe and confess Him as your Lord, then God Almighty moves you from sin unto salvation. Translates you out of the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light. Something happened when you confess Him as Lord. He moves you from and into this. From sin into salvation. Let's say I'm sick in my body. And let's say I've got a revelation in my heart that Jesus is the healer. Let's say I've been reading the Word of God. Not saved very long. I come across Isaiah chapter 53 verse number 5. And I read there where Isaiah said, By His stripes we are healed. And then I got to read over the New Covenant. Oh, 1 Peter 2, 24. And I come across that scripture and it says, By whose stripes we were healed. Now I read where I are healed, now I read where I were healed. Wow. And I began now, I began to confess I'm healed by His stripes before I'm healed. When I was still sick, I began to say what the Word says. I believe I confess what I believe. I believe I confess what I believe. I may be walking around without a dime in my pocket. But if I've been faithful to give God His tithe, and I've been, I've been a cheerful giver, and, and I've done what I'm supposed to do in the natural, then I can believe in my heart, confess with my mouth, that my God shall supply all my need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Can you give me an amen? I confess all my needs are there. Now, the trouble with most folk is this. They're trying, they're, they're trying to get it and then say it. But you've got to believe you got it before you... If you already got it, why do you need to confess it? That's hell dumb, oh. <laughs> but most folk, they've they got to get it before they believe it. But Jesus said, what things have you desired when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. But most folks got to see it, feel it, touch it, smell it, taste it, handle it before they believe it. But that's 
itself, eh? Is it? Is it? If I get a revelation of the Word of God in me, then I begin to walk by faith. I begin to believe what I read. I begin to believe what I see. Then I begin to speak it out of my mouth as a two-edged sword. I begin with the Word and I end with the Word. Because Jesus is the beginning and Jesus is the end. And He's the Word made flesh. So He's the Word. Am I making any sense? I don't know if I am or not, but I hope I am. When we get a revelation of God's Word in our spirit, then we begin to confess what we, what we believe. And I'm praying I'm believing when I get it. <laughs> well, go ahead and believe that dumb stuff if you want to. Amen. When somebody asks you how you're feeling, you ought to say, ask me what I believe. Because what I'm feeling might not line up with what I believe. You only need to hear that. <laughs> but I, I, I'm speaking what I'm believing. Why? To make my feelings line up with what I believe in and what I'm confessing. So what I believe in my heart and confessing with my mouth is more important than how I'm feeling. Y'all in your mouth lost. What I believe in my heart and confessing with my mouth is more important than how I'm feeling. Amen. Don't ask me how I'm feeling. That's what I believe in. So what I, how I feel might not line up with what I'm confessing. Glory to God. Amen. So we, 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 we get hung up on time on how we feel instead of what we believe. Now, Frank, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> well, feelings ain't got nothing to do with it. Faith ain't got faith. I mean, feelings ain't got nothing to do with faith. Are you listening to it? This will help you. This refresher course will help you. We, we, what we, what we are believing in our heart Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. So that, you don't have to be around for anybody very long, know where they're at. Right. You, can lo you can locate people if you just listen. Right. I, I can locate people in just a minute. Just, it don't take me no time to locate where y'all. Because I'm going to just listen. What am I hearing? How you feeling? Well, don't ask me that. Ask me what I believe. Because my feelings ain't too good right now, but my believing is right on top of the Word. Amen. Amen. I'm believing by His stripes I'm healed. Amen. And when you took me off to the cemetery, I'll still be healing about my casket. I'm healed by His stripes. <laughs> we'll end with the Word because I'm going to begin with I'm going to end with Are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Ah, I don't think you are, is it? Anybody hear what I'm saying? Am I making any sense? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. So what I'm believing in my heart and confessing with my mouth is more important than what I'm feeling yeah. and what I'm hearing yeah. and what I'm seeing. That's right. Ah, Jesus, boy, we're messing you up now. Glory to God. I believe I'm an overcomer. Amen. I believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe I'm the head, not the tail. I believe I'm above only, not beneath. I believe the Word is working in me. I believe the blessing of heaven is upon me and overtaking me. I believe mercy and goodness is following me all the days of my life. I believe greater is he that is in me than he that is against me. Hallelujah. I believe that everything I put my hands to shall prosper. I believe I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water and everything I touch is going to prosper and I walk in the blessing and favor of all my big God. I believe in my heart and I am the head and I am not the tail. I'm blessed going out and I'm blessed coming in. I believe I'm moving into what God has for me. As it, can I get a witness from the what say ye out there in this house? I believe that's not what that word says. I am, I am. I believe I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I believe it because God said it. If He says it, that settles it. I believe nothing else but what must say the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand of them around here, but it shall not come out of me. Glory to God. Amen. He shall bless me with long life and show me his salvation. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I'm believing in my heart and confessing with my mouth may not be what I'm feeling and it may be not what I'm seeing 
And it may not be what I'm here. But I'm going to trust God's word. Amen. Because Jesus is the beginning and Jesus is the ending. And if I begin with the word, I'm going to end with the word. Again, Abraham waited 25 years for the promise. We don't do too good with 25 years, do we? We really don't do too good with 25 minutes. You say amen. amen. We began with the word 30 minutes ago, but an hour and a half later, talk to me somebody. Yeah. Come on, turn, talk to the preacher. Talk to the preacher. Talk to the preacher. Amen. This is a good refreshing course. This will help you kill you one. <laughs> uh, you can took your shoes off. You don't put your shoes back on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you got them shoes on. I'll, you go out here with your toes all bruised up. <laughs> Am I right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. Let me shout this out right real quick so the spirit world can hear me, especially any of my soul. Let me, let me just shout this out right real quick. I expect to win. Amen. And I will win. Come hell or high water, I will win. If I get a revelation of Jesus Christ in my heart and speak it out of my mouth, I'm coming out victorious, Lord of God. I don't care what I'm going through, I'm going to come out victorious. If I can get the revelation of His Word in my heart, confess it with my mouth, and stay on the Word, refuse to come off the Word, begin with it, end with it, I'm going to walk in victory. I'm going to come out of this thing victorious. Now, it might be 10 years down the road, but I'm coming out of this thing. It may be 10 minutes down the road, but I'm coming out of this thing victorious. Yeah. It may be 10 weeks down the road, but I'm coming out of this thing victorious. Amen. Because I'm going to begin with the Word, I'm going to end with the Word. Hallelujah. Right. That's hard to do, isn't it? But it can be done. God wouldn't be a just God if He told us to do something we couldn't do. Right. Man, Jesus, I tell you what, my people, I don't know what's happening to them tonight. Then. I'm done. Y'all still alive? Y'all still, still alive? Amen. All right, let's go to Isaiah 55. Turn your Bible to Isaiah 55. I forgot to tell you to go there. Go to the index of your Bible. You don't worry about that. Go to the contents of your Bible. You'll find that where I say it. You need to see it in your Bible rather than on the screen. That way you can underline it, mark it out, whatever you want to do. Isaiah 55. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are you still with me? Amen. Am I making any sense? Amen. I'm making good sense. Amen. If you just listen to me. Golly. Look at his eyes, eight fifty-five. Are you there? All right. Let's back up verse number eight. Let's read. Let's read eight through eleven. All right. I say in chapter fifty-five. The Lord says, "For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways," saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing wherein to I send it. Amen. Notice verse number 11. Notice what it says. God said, whatever I send my word into, it will work. It will prosper. It will prosper in the thing where I send it. Now get this. Get this. Get this. It has to be sent. And plant it into something before it will work. In before the screen just missed it. It has to be sent and planted into something before it will work. Got it? 
Once it has been planted into something, it will do what it was sent to do and return to God with a good report. God sends it out as a seed, but it returns to Him as a harvest. Why? Seed. You plant seed into something. Right? His Word. He sent His Word as a seed. You plant it into something. You plant the seed. God sends it as a seed and returns to Him as a harvest. It, His Word returns. It will not return to Him void. Wow. Boy, that's powerful right there. Watch that. Watch. So how does God send His Word? And, 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 and who does He send it to? God, say right there. Let me, let me get Psalm 107. You just look, look on the screen. That way you just hang on right there and I'll say it. Psalm 107 and verse number 19. Let me show you this. Look at it. I'm just going to grab two scriptures in here. I go through the whole song and they got tired. Here's what happened. What's it? Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. So how does He save them out of their, out of their distresses? Notice them. Notice, notice, notice. He does that by sending His Word. Look at verse number 20. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen. Look at that. When He sends His Word, it's not sent void. It's not, it's not sent just to hang around. His Word was sent to deliver you. His Word was sent to heal you. His Word was sent to accomplish His will in you. It's sent to produce in you God's perfect will. And God said His Word will not return unto Him void. So somewhere we're going to have to return the Word back to God. How do I return the Word? Do I return it down in belief? Or do I return it in faith? How do I return the Word back to God and, and, and get the victory of it? How Lord, do I do that, preacher? Well, that, that's, that's awful, 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 awful good. Here, here, here's what happened. Isaiah chapter 59. Get back on Isaiah. Look at you're in 55. Look, 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 first, look at chapter 59. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 59, verse number 19. Don't lose me now. Don't lose me. If you do, you're going to miss this. Isaiah 57, I'm sorry. Isaiah, Isaiah 57, verse 19. Look at this. Isaiah 57, 19. Watch now, what? Are you with me? Look at it. Look. Isaiah said, I create the fruit of the lips. God says, I create the fruit. Remember back in Proverbs 18 and 20, 21. Your mouth has fruit. Yes. Death and life in the power of the tongue. Yes. And they that love you shall the fruit thereof. Yeah. Isaiah 57 verse number 19. God says I create the fruit of the lips. Yeah. I create the fruit of the lips. God said I will send my word to produce. So now, now, now what, what, what do I do once I receive the word? Well, let's go back. We believe it in our heart and say it with our Mouth. We believe in our heart and say it with our, our mouth. Why is it important that we say it with our mouth? Because God didn't say He would create the fruit of your heart. He said He would create the fruit of your lips. He can only bring to pass what you are saying. I create the fruit of your, your lips. God is saying, I will create re the reality of your, of your lips. I will put fruit to your words. My God. I will put fruit to your words. He said in the gospel, one place, he, Jesus said, become what you believe. I will put fruit to your words. I will put reality to your words. I create the fruit of your lips. God Almighty, I'm getting, I'm getting way beyond now. I'm getting way more reason now. Is that what I say? Is that what I say? If it's said, I will create the, I will create the fruit, and our words have fruit. Our words are containers, life and death, life and death, fruit, and whatever you talk is what the fruit you go in. Are you with me? I got one over here fanning, got two over here covered up. What are you doing, sister? You got some bread freezing, you got some burning up. What do you? Ain't heaven gonna be good? Hallelujah. 
spit. Glory to God. I'm going to start turning air on this side, heat on this side. No, no. Got that back one. Air over here, heat over there. What? Well, you're going to get over this side. Middle side's going to be neutral. We ain't going to have to be the war. We're going to watch these shiver and them over there. Well, no, we can't watch them over there. Let me pull off the cover and everything else. God said, I will create the fruit of your lips. Are you with me? Are you with me? Why is it I have to say what I say? There's one reason why. Because, because according to Hebrews 4.14, the Hebrew writer says, because I have a great high priest, and he's the high priest of our confession, and he's constantly, listen to me, he's constantly sending you the word, sending you the word, sending you the word, sending you the word, sending you the word. Every word that I receive, I put in my heart, I began to confess with my mouth, and he said he will create reality of what I'm speaking in my life. That's that, listen, listen. That's how the word does return to him void. He said, "I'm going to create the fruit of your lips." Are y'all listening to me? That's how come his word will not return to him void. That's why when you come to God, come to God with you with His word. If you'll come with His word, God watches over His word to perform it. He'll bring it to completion. If you'll begin with the word and end with the word, He'll bring it to pass. Amen. That's why His word will return to him void. That's why his word is like the seed that waters the ground. Just like the rain falls from heaven and the snow falls from heaven and waters the ground and, and the seed begins to bring forth fruit. God says, well, so, so shall my word be. Are you, are you getting any of this? Are you listening? Look at this powerful scripture. We, we, we are the garden that God plants his word in. Look at it. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 9. I love that scripture right there. Paul says, ye are God's husbandry. Or God's farm. And the Bible says you're God's garden and vineyard. Wow. What does that mean? That means we're God's garden. And God plants His Word in us. And when we, when we receive that Word and confess that Word, God says, I created the fruit of your lips. Boy, oh, I tell you, it's hard to get y'all excited about this tonight. Boy, oh, I tell you, I missed it somewhere. I got all excited about this, but I swear y'all ain't excited a bit about this. Man, I got all half slapped here today. Um, I did. I went up and checked on Debbie there right before church, and y'all pray for Debbie. Now, Debbie still needs a mirror. Needs a mirror. She's doing a little bit better. A little bit better she was. But she still, she still needs a mirror. She's still on the bed with me. Pray for this. She's a mirror. God's in miracle work of Israel. Amen. He's in miracle work. Amen. God that created this universe. God that, that made that created man out of the dust of the earth. Yeah. Why well, it ain't nothing for God to give him a new set of love. Amen. 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 Ain't nothing for him to do that. That's not a thing that figure raise a four day old dead body up out of a tomb up there in the name of Lazarus. He'd give that to say, Oh, If he could raise his three day old dead body, Jesus Christ, out of the, out of the tomb, oh, said, God's ain't no trouble then. Amen. Is it? Do we believe it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe this stuff. I believe that girl could get up out of the. I, I, I prayed that today. I, I, I was in here today for that. And I really believe that. I, I really believe it. I really believe that girl could get up. Wake up out of what she's in and look at everybody and say, I am hungry in the bar. Give me something to eat. And I believe in two or three hours left she eats, she can get up and walk out of that hospital. Amen. I believe that. Amen. I believe that. Amen. We have that hospital. Amen. Amen. I just believe it. I just believe it. I just believe it. Can you talk about it? Because I see it in the Word of God. I see it in this book. Can you talk about it? You try to tell me the healing went out with the last, last apostle? I'm telling you, you better read the book again, brother. You better read the book again. 
They tell me that all the gifts of the Spirit was gone and it did not just around it. You've already booking it. The rebooking. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now y'all done got me off track here. Why, why did you do that to me? <coughs> if you'd put them shoes on, I would have got off track. Good place for a stick up, by the way. <laughs> Are you still with me? Amen. Look at Isaiah 57, 19. Put it up there, Mark. Verse 19, look at this entire scripture. Isaiah recorded, God said, I'll, I'll create fruit in your lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off. And to him that is near, saith the Lord. I will heal him. Folks, that's over in the old covenant. Y'all ain't in here. That's over in the old covenant. According to the Hebrew writer, we have a better covenant. Established upon better promises. If that could happen in the old covenant, my God, what could happen under the new covenant? It was the blood of a mere animal, a mere lamb that got the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage. 400 years of bondage. It was the blood of a mere lamb that got them out of there. If a blood of a mere lamb could do that, how much more shall the shed blood of Jesus do for us on this new covenant? My God, we need to get too into we need to get too into this word. And believe this word. Come hell or high water, refuse to come off of this word. God said, I will heal him. Amen. So how's God going to heal? Through the words of my mouth. Amen. I create the fruit of your lips. <laughs> Can anybody see what I'm talking about? Amen. Can you see why the Bible says that there's death and life in the power of the tongue? Can, can anybody see why, why it's so necessary that we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth? Can anybody understand that? Can anybody see why God can create what you're saying? He backs it up with His Word. I create the fruit of your lips. So believing is not enough. <coughs> believing is only halfway there. You've got to finish the cycle. You've got to confess what you're believing. Amen. If you begin to do that, you begin to create a whole new realm. If you begin to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. You begin to create a whole new realm in your life with God. And when I begin this, when I begin to speak out of my mouth the words of faith, things God said, and what happens? I begin to turn God loose to work in my life. You begin to take the handcuffs off of God, so to speak, and now He begins to move and work in your life. When you begin to confess what His Word says. Stop this moment. Think about the power God's given us. Think, th think about that. Death and life in the power. Think about the power that God has given us. Before you start anything, before you start, no matter what, stop before you start it. Begin with the Word. Amen. End with the Word. He's given us awesome power in our mouth. God Almighty. Yes, amen. And the more you come to church, the more you come to know Dead Wednesday night prayer meetings, if we say no prayer meeting. I don't think so. The more you come to Sunday AM service and Sunday school, that means the more words you're going to hear. And the more words you hear, the more words you get in your spirit. And the more words you get in your spirit, all oh, the more you can release out of your mouth like a two edged sword. And the more you can walk in the spirit. And the more you can have what the Bible says you can have. Because, of, listen, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Before long, you'll have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Boy, that's crazy now. I've shot some religious people right between the eyes now. I said before long, you can have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Walk in the Word. Believe the Word. Confess the Word. Yes. Begin with and end with and refuse to come off of it. Praise God. Well, praise God. I believe I'm going to go home. <laughs> I'll be going with you in a minute. Are you still with me? Y'all waiting on me to get to something real deep, and I ain't got nothing real deep to give you. God said in Isaiah that He will create the fruit of your lips. Is that what He said? Yes. He will create the fruit, the fruit of your lips. 
Everything His Word says. If I can believe it in my heart, that means I, I have to get it in my heart and then say it out of my mouth and say it and say it and say it and say it. If it don't come fast apart, I'm not going to come off one of them and keep on saying it. That's what Jesus told in Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. We talked about saying to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, shall die in the heart, shall, what you say shall come to pass. That word saith is a continual saying. It's not a one-time thing, not a one-time event. You don't say it that, come off of it in 30 minutes. You continue to say it, and 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 say it. You stay on the Word. Stay on the Word. Number one person that will tell you it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. But if we train ourselves, we can do it. We can do it. Can I give an amen? amen. Can I give an amen? amen? God said He'd create fruit of limbs. So if you and I get a hold of that, that should change the way we talk. Amen. Just to have somebody say amen right there. Amen. God can't create doubt and unbelief. Amen. It'd be negative and have an evil spirit. Why don't you give God something to work with? Amen. He can create fruit. If you'll give him something to work with. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, we live. Hebrew right tells us to hold fast to our confession, our profession, our confession. Look at this. Hold fast to the profession, which means translated confession of your faith, of our faith without wavering. Why? For he is faithful that promised. He's faithful that promised. He promised him it will come to pass. He will bring it to pass. Are, are you with me? Our faith in God. He, listen, Bob. Listen, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. He's faithful. If we'll hold fast to our confession without wavering. Don't be like James. A double-minded man. Double-minded man is so stable in all of his ways. In faith today, put him in slavery and doubt. That's an unstable man. That's a double-minded man. He's unstable. He, he. And that man will receive nothing of the Lord. I tell you something, tonight, y'all going to vote me in five more years as pastor. Amen. Amen. I'm, that's all I learned tonight. <laughs> Don't get too excited. <laughs> I didn't say how. <laughs> he might, has anybody heard what I'm saying? He might heard what I'm saying. Am I making any sense in this view? Am I making any sense? Yes. Have we done a complete run around with the, with the word? We, 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 I mean, when we started, we started in Revelation. We, we, we just about out, come all the way back to Genesis with the word of God. Then a complete circle. We're getting back where we started. Jesus is the beginning and end. You've got to begin with him and end with him. He's the word. You've got to begin with the word and end with the word. Can't come off of him. Can't come off of him. Blessings all the way. Amen. 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 You know what you need to do tonight? Confess who you are in my life. You know what else you need to do? You need to speak blessings over your needs. You need to speak healing to your body. You need to speak victory over the defeat. Are you listening? Amen. You need to speak it out your mouth. Amen. Verbally. Amen. So that every spirit can hear you say Amen. 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 Look at this. Last statement on the board. Revelation in your spirit spoken out of your mouth releases the power of God in your life. If you get a revelation of this word in you, and you begin to speak it out of your mouth, 
It releases the supernatural power in your life. Yes, yes. Because now you've got God's word on it. If you've got God's word on it, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what this church says, that church says, this denomination says, that denomination says, it doesn't matter what this pastor says, this preacher says, it doesn't matter what I say. If you get a revelation of that word in you, speak it out of your mouth, the power of God will release it. Release it in the realm. Amen. Amen. That's why. That's why you don't come to church with stopped up ears. Come on. That's why if you come to church on time, tell you, might as well stay home. Well, I didn't get nothing out of that one. Are y'all are y'all sure y'all all right tonight? Man. I was doing better this when we were saving. Poor Ryan, he's walking around like a man in the fall. He don't worry. He's walking around like a man in the fall. He's walking around like a Born again, you know what looks like your life right now. How you doing, girl? Oh, I woke you up, baby. I made any system right now. For God's sake, don't go home and turn another room in. If you get if you go over in the book of Hezekiah, you'll find out you're not supposed to be placing some cabinets. He went. Amen. Let me ask you two a couple questions we're going to Let me ask you. What do you need God to do for you? What do you need God to do for you? Then get some word on the issue. Get some word on the matter. Get some work, whatever, whatever you need to God to work out in your life, and believe that word with all your heart. And confess that word out of your mouth. Begin with it and end with it, man. Come on, son. Stay with it. If you'll stay with it, it'll come to pass. You'll create the fruit of your lips. He'll give you some reality behind the word. Hey. Mark. Amen. It's good, man. It's good. My God, I got another pair of shoes here. You think I'm going crazy on me. I'll take your shoes off anyway. I got a pair of shoes. The rapture took place. Somebody's missing. Somebody's got a shoes on me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just cutting up now, so I'm holding on here a little while. <laughs> Succeeding or failing. It's a matter of you being a victim or a victim. That's for sure. They did they, they, they say 20, 30 years ago, don't you go here or not? That? Amen. This is something we've been over and over and over and over. It's, it's, I'm many, many, many times. You gotta keep you gotta keep bringing it back to the table because we get complacent. Amen. We get driven back into what we used to do. We get all negative, we get all doubt, we believe. You gotta give God something to work with. Bring him his work. Oh, 
Ale to je to, co je to, Nine years they said that we would live faster. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the beginning and the end. The doctor is not, he does not have the final word. Jesus has the final word because he's the end. Work the word. Work the, word. the word will work if you work the word. Amen. Amen. God. I'm not talking about lying. Now, you can't lie. That's not what I'm talking about. People have been diagnosed with this and that. They have, they have x-rays and all this to prove what's in them. No, I'm not, I, I, I don't lie about what's in I'm not lying about what's in them. That's what I'm doing. I will do this. If I, yes, I do have this. But I did not strive to be here. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It has no right. It's in, it has no right in my body. I curse it to its roots. I command it in Jesus' name to die and read my body. Yep. Amen. We can speak the word of it. I've been redeemed from the curse. Christ has been made a curse for us. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentile, which is us. Been redeemed from sickness and disease. And therefore, I forbid any sickness and disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and virus that touches this body shall die instantly in Jesus' name. Every organ, every tissue of this body shall function in the perfection which God created to function. I forbid any malfunction of this body in Jesus' name. Amen. That's how you talk to your body. I speak to every artery, every valve in this, that's got blood flowing through this body. I command this blood to flow throughout this body unrestrictedly. No plaque build up in Jesus' name in these arteries. This heart I speak to, it will be healthy. It will pump blood from this heart and to this heart. It will flow throughout my body in Jesus' name. Unrestrictedly it will flow in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm crazy. I talk to my body. I talk to my mind too. I have to. <laughs> Because they ain't got much. I tell myself I have the mind of Christ. And sometimes I stop myself and say, No, you don't, not with them thoughts, you don't. But then I begin to have to cast the imagination down. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I bring every thought captivity into the obedience of Christ. I do what the Word says. I can't stop the thought from coming, but I can keep it from building a nest in my head. I can stop myself from dwelling on the thought. I gotta quit, man. No, I gotta quit. I'm gonna get you on Hallelujah. <laughs> no. I <don't> know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Yeah. Amen. I'm done, y'all. Amen. Um, Amen. Um, Amen. Um, Amen. Um, Amen. Um, what? Um, oh, God. Oh, it's in confession I gave you years ago. Years ago. You still come to me. I do. I do. I bring the word out. I bring the word out. Amen. If the devil sticks around long enough, I, you know what I do? If he, if he bothers me long enough, I invite him to come in and say that. <laughs> I've seen right here for a while. That's me and you talk about this. And he won't find me. He's worse than his own witness. <laughs> I talk to you about the word to them. They, they won't leave. They ain't gonna hide. I gotta go. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Amen. <laughs> hey, if he's gonna stay in my house, I'm gonna make him miserable. I get in the front row, sit down here, let us talk here a little while. I get my confession out, I get the word out, I read the word, I confess the word of God over us. 
Amen. Uncle Ellen, he's gone. Where do you go, Bill? Don't say. Don't say that word. That's why that word's important, man. That's why that word has to be a daily part of your life. It has to be. It has to be part of your day. Every day. Amen. Stay with me. 15 till. If I got anything before I dismiss you, 15 minutes early. Hallelujah. Y'all better tell me you love me when you go out the door. I'll keep you 30 minutes later Sunday. Got out on the Sunday.